Classic Truck Rescue. Today on Classic Truck Rescue, we're gonna tear this 59 Chevy Apache 3100 Napco four wheel drive the rest of the way down to the bare frame. Yep, I'm diving in folks. But we need to get these axles disconnected from this frame because this frame is junk. And we're gonna look real hard at the cab because it's got some issues. We gotta get her down to the bare frame so I can begin the work of rebuilding it. You can't get there till you get there, if that makes any sense. I gotta get some more work done on this thing. So you two or three people that wanna go to rushing off to the comment section and give me a hard time about not working on my building, like, like I even have the option to just work on my building all the time, spend money on lumber and nails and tools and not ever make money to pay bills, like I have that option. Uh, go ahead and get running on over there to the comment section Anyways, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but if you see me working on something else that's not my building, I'm obviously working. There must be a reason I'm doing it, or, or whatever I'm doing, there must be a reason for it. I'm not completely stupid. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm not stupid. I can tell you this, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that I would rather be doing. Okay, there's no other kind of work out here on the property that I'd rather be doing than working on my building. It's cold, it's wet. It, I would love to be in my shop doing this, but I'm not because it's not finished and, it, and I'm one guy. So I have to pay the bills to build if that makes sense so ease up on some of you guys something's wrong with your upbringing or something be kind my building will be finished when you see me standing in it with a cement floor underneath me lights over my head and rain pounding on the roof with me not getting wet that's when my building will be finished please try to understand we've been through a rough eight years out here trying to get situated out here on this raw 25 acres of bushes and trees and things don't happen overnight and you can't just do something like build a hundred foot by 50 foot building non-stop without paying the bills working on trucks selling parts getting trucks shipping trucks things like that so today I'm going to do a favor to the poor owner of this truck who's been more than patient and I'm going to dedicate the entire day to stripping this truck all the way down to the bare frame. You have to give me credit for one thing. I don't clickbait you guys. What I put in my description is what's in my video. So take the time, it's just a, usually just a little paragraph. And, and you can usually tell another clue, another real good clue, is the thumbnail. My thumbnail usually pertains to what's going on in the video. If you don't see a bunch of lumber and framing and uh, nail guns and the crane or the bucket truck, probably not going to be a building video. If you see a truck, the video is going to have something to do with that. I've noticed on some of the channels, They've gone beyond clickbait. They've gone to where they absolutely lie to you in the thumbnail. I'm not going to point anyone out specifically, but there are channels that literally lie to you in the thumbnail and say something's happening that is not happening. And I've seen them put this message about what's going on in the thumbnail and then do a live stream and have to tell people 30 or 40 times, no, we're not really doing that. Except they don't say, cause we lied. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you in my, in my thumbnails or my description. So read the description. If it's not what you want to watch, don't watch. I've got too many viewers that are fully supportive and say, Rick, post a video, whatever you're doing and I'll watch it. Those are the people I wanna make videos for, but eventually 
we'll get to the point where there won't be any building videos. The building will be done. And I'm working hard to make that happen. I really am. And if you can't see that, well, you know. If you can't see that, <laughs> you're not paying attention. Anyways, there will come a time when the building will be completely finished. No, there won't. It'll never be finished. But there will come a time when I can work in my building. And when that time comes, it will be beautiful, folks. We will have a project over here, and a project over here, and a project over here. Each project will have its own section or area where its parts go, and it goes. And when we run into a dead end because we don't have parts or, or something for one build, we'll pop over to another one. But it's going to be all about restoring and uh, helping other people restore classic trucks. Like I said, I'm going to leave this cab in one section. I want to leave the glass in it. I want to leave the doors on it. I want to leave the seat in it. In order to make that happen, I got to sneak the... I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try to sneak the steering column out because on these trucks, the steering column is one great big piece that's connected to the steering gearbox right there. We'll try to get that out of there, get the steering wheel off, disconnect all the wiring and everything, get the hood off, and uh, try to lift the cab off in one piece where I can go put it aside on some blocks, keep the doors closed, all the glass in it, and take it apart when we go putting the truck back together. The goal is to get it down to the bare frame because this frame is raunchy. It's just, it's not right. It's, there, was, there were things done to this frame that shouldn't have been done at all. Uh, but we're going to put a brand new nice frame there. And uh, in order to get there, we got to get it torn all the way apart. But today, enough bumping of my gums. We already disconnected the headlight harness. It's a brake light switch right there. Gotta make sure that's disconnected. I don't just cut the wires. Uh, even if I'm doing a full restoration on a vehicle because a homie needs all the help he can get putting it back together. If I'm honest with you, I've admitted countless times that I am not a wiring genius type person. Now, I can wire a car, from scratch even, but leaving little clues like this just saves you time. It really does. Shows you right where to go, if that makes sense. Can we use that for a holdy? For a holdy hold. <laughs> that rubber's not very pliable. Oh, we gotta get this e brake unhooked. Love that cotter pin. <sighs> I 
It's where a smart person would go, just go get a wire cutter and cut that and they'd be done. But I like to do things the hard way. I mean, it'd take me a lot of time to go over there and get that. Now, in my experience, good luck getting this pin to slide out of there. And good luck just getting it lubed up enough where you can spread that apart. Oh, Rick, aren't you even going to try wiggling that out? Nope. I ain't wasting my time. After you pull about a hundred of these off, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Oh, nope. This would be the one, of course, where I would be wrong. I can get that pin out. And since I can, I will. If I can do it the right way, I will do it the right way. Come on. It's oblong, so you gotta you can only catch it one way with the vice grips. That's alright. Hey, that'll make it easier going the other way. It's missing. Is it missing? No, it's not missing. This is a vital part right here, this pivot. But the next step, so this rod doesn't get bent up, is to pull this guy off. Hopefully I've got that little clutch tool. These trucks have a weird head. They're not Phillips and they're not regular. Well, you can use a regular on some of them, but they're called clutch head bolts. And you gotta have the right tool for that. I am too smart. I am too smart. Howdy Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's another thing that will be neat about having my shop set up is I won't have to hunt for all my tools. And it is just by the grace of God, thank you Lord, that I was able to find my clutch head bits. That's what they look like. That's what they look like. See? And <laughs> I even got lucky and found the right one. Now, you get one chance with the clutch head screws. Don't squander this opportunity. Yep, you get one chance. So to kind of stack the deck in my favor, I always give her a little tap. Sometimes that shock can break them loose. Give her a squirt. And then I try to break it loose. And don't do it with your impact either. Take your time and use a ratchet. I got lucky. There we go. These apparently are getting hard to find. These little metal pieces and the felt grommet. Because I've had a lot of people asking me for them lately. So we just leave those on there for now. Now we have to go inside and remove the emergency brake lever. Here's the e-brake handle right here. There's three half inch bolts there that you gotta take out, one, two, three. Then this rod right here has a cotter pin on the top. You pull that out, pull this rod down, then you can pull the e-brake rod through the firewall and you'll have the handle off. Then what I usually do next is pop the steering wheel off and disconnect the steering column from the dashboard right here. You can just take these two half inch bolts out. You can also take these two out and just take that whole uh, column mount out and put it aside.
Okay, so I've got my handle off right here. And now I can pull this e-brake rod through, through the firewall. I just leave that stuff on there. And then I go ahead and put it back in the e-brake handle because that's a real special washer. It's a special washer that goes on there. And just stick the little crusty thing back in there. And then you keep all that together. We'll also put this stuff with it when we get to that point. What's holding that in? Man, this truck was really kind of Mickey Mouse together. Um, not this and on the truck, but anytime I can disassemble <laughs> the e brake system with my bare hands. That's not a good sign. It ain't supposed to be that way. Come on. Get back in there. You could dismantle that with your hands if you were determined enough. Anyway. So I'll put this aside. And now I have the steering wheel broke loose. And the column dropped. I need to take this nut off and pull the idler arm off of there. This is definitely the proper tool for that big nut on the steering gearbox. Now, before I take that nut all the way off, I like to let it cover the threads a little bit and give that a good smacking to the Sledge-O-Matic because a lot of times that'll break that loose. Gotta have some swinging room though. All right, I'll quit being lazy and go get my puller. Wish me luck. Well, that doesn't happen very often, folks. <laughs> I got lucky, straight up lucky. My puller was where it was supposed to be. It's hard for me to do sometimes in my current setup put stuff where it's supposed to be. You may find this next move humorous, but it works. It works. I can stay there for a minute. And then you have three three quarter inch bolts that go through, and you put a wrench on the back side. Oh, look at that one's loose. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. Boy. Shame on the people that put this thing together. Shame on you. And sold it to someone as a truck. Holy cow. I gotta take this off. We're testing that theory again. On whether I can dismantle this e-brake system with my bare hands. Why not? Why not test that theory? It's easier than going and getting the proper tools to do the job. A lot easier than that. I got it. That's what was holding it. The little baling wire on the e-brake. <laughs> and there's the pin. We'll use that baling wire. Disconnect the cable. Grab this mount. There's a cable that goes into this mount. And this mount goes down here so 
as you'll recall and there's supposed to be a spring and a washer and a clip up there holding that on it's not but that's okay it will have the proper stuff when it goes back in so there's a cable you have a spring and a washer and a cotter pin here that hold this into this bracket that rod I pulled out that goes through the firewall pulls this back which pulls on this cable and continues on down the line activating the e-brake okay now I should have access to these uh, bolts back here for the steering gearbox you'll see they're covered with quite a bit of crud they always are you know they're right down there at the bottom of the engine compartment what do you expect what do you expect from that yeah that was barely hanging on there and you just have to kind of slide your wrench up along the frame unless you want to crawl down under there which I don't I don't really and also spinning the bolt around from this side will help you to feel feel for that nut and it'll also break some of the dirt off boy that's loose see how that steering columns flopping around that's something that we're gonna have to address putting this back together that uh, shaft input shaft going into the gearbox had a lot of play in it and I do remember this truck having play in the steering the short distance that I drove it I wasn't too encouraged with its behavior so I didn't drive it very far I moved it I moved it around when I had to. I'm going to spin that around to knock some of the debris off the other side. That one's loose too. Huh. Not good. That's no bueno, folks. Now I doubt that this column's going to come out because it's right up against this exhaust manifold. That must have been quite the feeling driving this down the road with the, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the steering gearbox is literally touching the exhaust manifold. So every time that motor moved, you could feel it through the steering wheel. Might just go ahead and pop that exhaust manifold off of there. That would be the smart thing to do. Holy cow. I don't know if you can see it, folks, but the exhaust down there is resting against the cross member. Yeah, this must have been a joy. A real joy and a pleasure. So I already broke my uh, steering nut loose and uh, pop the steering wheel off you also have to pull this turn signal switch off too wonder if that's any good froze up we'll have to rebuild that but there's a Phillips screw on this side on the back that you loosen up and it's got a little wedge thing in there that when you loosen it up it relieves pressure you can pull it I'll just show you can you see somebody it appears has gone ahead and cut yeah they cut the all of the wires going up into the column except one so it should come out easy right no no you know better Tappy tap.
these are rebuildable so you don't you don't want to beat on it with a metal hammer but you do want to beat on it just because Okay, steering column's loose. Okay, so there's nothing left holding the steering column in on the inside of the truck. And there's nothing left connected on the outside holding it into the truck. The only thing holding it in the truck is this exhaust manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. It's an incorrect engine and exhaust manifolds. As you can see, it's got a quadra jet on it and a HEI distributor, which I didn't notice this till I really got to looking at this thing, but they did modify the firewall just a wee bit to make that HEI work or fit, whatever. N not cool, but anyway, I still have to remove the clutch pedal and the brake pedal before I can get the cab off. And the nut for the brake pedals right there, I can get the clutch pedal off, no problem. But that brake pedal is hard they're rusted on there and you gotta sometimes you gotta smack them around a little bit you know so they understand with this and this out of the way i'll have much better access to that i was hoping to avoid crawling under this truck until it was absolutely necessary but i guess absolutely necessary has arrived By the way, I did tighten that <coughs> before I loosened it. If you don't tighten your exhaust bolts before you loosen them, you're asking for a broken exhaust bolt. I see you guys already know that. Some people don't though. And they just go on breaking exhaust bolts, which leads to aggravation. fine exhaust system we are replacing this incorrect probably 305 or something with the correct factory six-cylinder engine oh no pre-stripped pre-stripped folks there we go Somebody already chewed on that one for a while. Oh, come on. Come on. Help the miller out. Yeah. this thing this thing's in my way but fortunately it's been installed like everything else on this truck hand tight hand tight folks yeah isn't that nice wouldn't it be nice to have your clutch linkage fall off while you're going down the road i've got a wire hanging me up oh, there we go oh come on out of there Come on. 
come to pop it. What's it holding up on now? As you can see, it'll give me much better access to that brake pedal. Clutchy linkage was never a problem. These brake pedals have very fine threads on them. So what I do is I back the nut off just until I can see a gap in there. I want as much of that nut covering the threads as possible, but I don't want the threads sticking out the other end of the nut. So that's pretty good right there. Because then, You give her a smack with this, and it's fun to try to get your swing right doing this. Need all the room I get. I don't think that budged it. I'm gonna have to move you guys for a sec. You're in my hammer tossing way. We'll have to stay over here. I need all the swinging room I can get. That may have done it there, folks. I'm gonna back her off just a hair more. No, foolish thinking, foolish thinking on my part. Yay! <laughs> also, <laughs> you can try thwacking it from the other side too, where you got more grippage. Come on now, now it's gonna spin around on me. That's right. That's why God gave me vice grips. So stop all that nonsense. That brake pedal's gotta come off. Buggered the end of the nut up just a little bit, but I would rather bugger the nut up then the threads. Yep, a grinder will fix that nut in a heartbeat. Those threads require a little more attention if you screw them up. Well, I was using the old GoPro to film disconnecting all the wiring from the engine, the throttle linkage, pulling the distributor cap off, and you guys missed the bailing wire that was holding the accelerator linkage on, and I discovered the reason they hacked the hole in the firewall was so that they could get to the last screw on the distributor cap which I had to remove from the inside. What else? There was some creativity with the gas pedal, 
creativity with the fuel lines just a lot of creativity on that truck that I probably just spared you it. anyways I got everything else unhooked and then went underneath the truck to get the transfer case linkage and the cap bolts let's get back in there okay so I have all of the wiring disconnected from the engine yes all the wiring disconnected from the engine and when you think you're done take another look around just make sure there's nothing that's going to hang you up when you got about 800 pounds of cab on the front of your tractor <laughs> that's how you choose to do it that's how i choose to do it so the only things i see that i have left to do no are you kidding me <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Show them how to do it. Be destructive like me. Or to disconnect the fuel line, which needs to be disconnected from behind the seat. Not from behind the seat, but from under the cab behind the seat. Also, have to disconnect the Napco transfer case shifter and that shifter. That one's easy. I'll show you. Also, my intention with this truck was to do a complete A to Z tear down and build on it to show you exactly how to completely tear down a 55 through 59. 58 and 9 are a little different than 55 through 7, but you can get there from here. This should show you how to completely tear down to the bare frame a 55 to 59 Chevy or GMC truck each model year and whether it's Chevy or GMC will uh, present its own little intricacies but the meat and potatoes is here so there is a playlist on this truck and I will put the name of that playlist in the description to this video if you want to know nut and bolt how to remove the front clip and nut and bolt how to remove the bed I've left the front clip in one piece and I've left the bed in one piece. I have a small space inside with lights and a little more organization where we can tear those apart. My goal right now is to get the drivetrain out, get the axles off. This frame is junk. I'll show you what I'm talking about when we get the cab off. But yeah, so if you have a if you're considering doing one of these, watch the series. It'll save you a lot of time. I'm not an expert on anything, but I've had a lot of experience tearing down and building these particular trucks. Uh, so the shifter, I'll get the tool. Another problem with building a building while you're working on trucks is that a lot of my tools are out there at the building site, including what you should be using for this, which is a pair of channel locks. But, hopefully, we can just push down on this. I'm gonna have to give it a pop first. Uh, be pushed down. Oh. I'm gonna have to go get my channel locks. I just know it. I just know it. Oh, I got lucky, folks. You push it and turn it and then pull it up. Shifter's out. The transfer case shifter will have to get from underneath. Might as well get my tools out of here. Once again, <laughs> I'm able to disassemble by hand without tools because there's a piece of wire holding. I 
Oh, that is a cotter pin. Yay. It's not much of a cotter pin, but it is a cotter pin. Have to get some vice grips to grab hold of that. Hi, honey. How was your day? Pretty good, I got this cab about ready to come off. Just the four mounting bolts, fuel line and uh, transfer case shifter. I'll take a break with you. All right, folks, I'm gonna go take a break with my beautiful wife, Jamie, and I'll be back. So, there is a, a silver lining in this truck. This is a one of the first positive things I may have mentioned this in a previous video but one of the positive things about this truck I'm running out of hands is that this is the Napco transfer case shift linkage right here from the bottom and this bracket that holds this arm where it pivots up there is riveted to the frame that tells me that this is a, a factory built napco four-wheel drive because uh, 55 through 57 actually 57 was the year that they started building napcos at the factory so some 57s have this bracket bolted on some have it riveted on but all 58 and 59 factory built napco four-wheel drives had it riveted to the frame there it's got a real hooky clip thing that you guys can probably see better than me right now i'll pop that cotter pin out of there pop whatever that is off of there and get that shifter arm out of the way and then i'll take the fuel line loose back here uh i believe it comes out it comes out down here yeah comes out of the back of the cab right there there's a connection right there where I can pop it loose that's an incorrect fuel line for this we'll change that when we put it back together so I'll get the shifter rod off get the fuel line disconnected remove the rear cab bolts and the front cab bolts and then we'll be ready to lift this off I'll be back Okay, folks, that's going to be it for today. It's obviously getting dark on me, and frankly, I'm tired. I do have the cab completely ready for liftoff. I had one bolt, the back cab mounting bolts, you've got the bolt coming in from the bottom into a cap nut that's beneath the fuel tank. That cap nut came loose, and I don't feel like pulling the fuel tank right now. So what I'm going to do tomorrow is get a new sawzall blade put a wedge between the cab and the frame mount and take my new sawzall blade aside from that one bolt it's ready for liftoff I want to thank everyone for watching i'm going to get back on this tomorrow as soon as the sun rises and get the cab off of it and then we'll go ahead and get the engine transmission transfer case and axles removed and we'll have a bare frame and I'll show you the ugliness. The good news about this truck and the reason it's worth doing a full resto on is that it is a true Chevy Apache 3100 short bed factory built Napco four wheel drive. And it does have all of the correct Napco gear, which I will go over with you tomorrow. If you like what you're watching, I know it would be a lot better if I'm in my shop. I'm working towards that and, and we'll get there, but I have to keep working. So if you like what you're watching, please share the videos with people that you think might. If you know someone that, that wants to restore one of these trucks, I'll show you every nut and bolt to take it apart and put it back together. Like, comment, subscribe. I try to answer all of my comments. I fail miserably, but I try and sometimes I actually succeed. So like, comment, subscribe. And like Jamie says, ding, hit the notification bell. Peace out, folks. I was waking up this morning, waking up before it's getting nine.
Kinda heavy on my shoulders Tracking down some moments back in time I could swore that I was in it Down to every minute Don't know what I was sipping But I felt like I was doing fine Oh my Turns out that I just got A little bit south Just a little bit north of the Georgia line Southern comfort, hanging with my friends, all playing games. 